<laughs> Welcome to the show, Trenton. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah. Hello. Sorry. Hello, hello. Let me start my... Loud and clear. How's everybody doing? Good, yeah. thanks, and you? Great. All good, all good. Uh, so tell us a little <laughs> bit about your vibes and about Chiba. So Chiba, we are a cannabis company. So I guess that's the relevance. Um, we consider ourselves to be a, a uh, sort of a health and wellness company in the cannabis space. So we, we have uh, CBD is one of our, our verticals. We have the Cannabis Academy. Um, and then we have Craft Cannabis TV, which is our, our media and sort of edutainment play, as we call it. Um, and the Academy has, you know, we've got a number of courses that are all live and running at the moment. In fact, I have a, a, a Zoom class tonight. We've introduced extraction and legal into one of our courses, which is super exciting. So that's the first time we're learning about tonight. Uh, we just launched a bud tender course a few weeks ago. We have grow courses that we're working on and developing. And just, uh, you know, just working, burning the midnight oil, trying to do the best we can to bring, you know, really good solid education to the South African market, which I think is desperately needed in order for the industry to grow and build. 100%. Education is important. It is. Oh, what has the response been like? The response has been really positive. Um, you know, one of the challenges with any cannabis industry is that, or any cannabis company is, there are limitations on, on uh, marketing on social media. We've become so used to using social media as a marketing space because it's so accurate and easy to measure. So the fact that we can't do that is it, it, it means that you know you have to work a lot harder to get the word out there. But um, I mean, we've got guys in our classes from all, all over Africa. There's a guy who um, is a Nigerian guy based in Berlin. We've got someone from Ghana at the moment, Kenya, and then literally all over the country. So the, the beauty of running an online um, training facility is you can have students anywhere. And, um, and the response has been incredible. I mean, we... We have people every day calling us, wanting to do courses, and, 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 we're, and we're looking at the demands in terms of what people are looking for, and, you know, if we get a lot of demand in a specific area, then we put that into course development. Um, it's a new industry, uh, you know, there's a lot of licenses that are supposed to be coming online, but there aren't people qualified to roll those licenses out. So I think it's going to be a bumpy year and a half for the industry. I think there's going to be a lot of people figuring it out as they go along. There's going to be a lot of people trying to grow crops en masse that are just going to fail. Um, it's just it's just the nature of a new industry. But the sooner we get onto the education of people and provide good quality education for as many people as possible, um, the better chance we have of, of becoming a global player, which I think we have the potential to do, but we really need to mobilize on the ground a lot more to be able to realize that. <clears throat> and what have been some of the most uh, frequently asked for sort of topics or subjects that come up when people approach you? I mean, growing is really is really a big one. You know, everybody wants to grow, whether whether it's a home grower. Um, you know, the fact that we can grow at home, you know, without being arrested technically, um, even though I know there are some issues with the bill. Um, for, the, for, the, for the average person on the street that doesn't really understand cannabis le legislation, etc., whether they can grow four plants or twelve plants at home, they don't care. They're just happy about the fact that they can grow at home. Um, you know, from a cannabis perspective, there are definitely some issues with the bill that's being proposed, and uh, but so growing is a big, a big thing. We're getting more and more people calling us about compliance. Um, how, how do I comply? How do I navigate the ecosphere of compliance? And one of the challenges is, I mean, at the moment, you know, if, if there isn't a big shift in September, it's going to slow our industry down. We, we really need the government to move on, on, on legislation now. You know, there, there's, there's, they've, there's, they've had their time. I do understand we've come out of a pandemic or we're still in a pandemic. But the reality is, is um, you know, the, the cannabis industry is screaming for this to move forward on an economic level, on a job opportunity level, on, a, on an export level. But if we can't sell cannabis internally, again, that's going to hurt our industry because the, the opportunities to export cannabis now are, are starting to, to, to close in. You know, the Canadians have legislation in place that disallows foreign companies to bring products in because they're trying to protect their own markets. Germany's GMP for, uh, standards are just too high for us in, in this country to, to realize financially. You know, and there are other countries who are starting to lock things down. So while, while, you know, to get a license here, you need an Ofcon license. 
and those are still available, um, those are going to dry up very quickly. So we have to be able to sell product internally so that we can create our own CBD products, our own THC products within the, uh, the, the community so we're not going to import product. Because at the moment, you know, most CBD, any, any CBD on the shelf at the moment that has any sense of credibility has, has been imported from the States or, or Europe. Um, there is nobody producing CBD here. I spoke to someone the other day who had produced the first batch of local CBD, but technically they're not allowed to sell it to you. So until we, we, we as, 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 as brands can buy local CBD, we have to, we have to spend money internationally in euros and dollars. And that's not going to, to, to facilitate the growth of our industry, importing finished goods. We need to have finished goods on the ground. So those are some of the things we're navigating. Also, there's the legislation. I mean, we're running this webinar with the um, with Fields of Green, you, know, you guys, next week on uh, you know, navigating South Africa's cannabis future. Um, we really feel there needs to be a lot more dialogue about how we can move this forward, how we can get momentum, how we can make sure that there are enough people talking about it. There are lots of, you know, the, un the underground cannabis industry is growing massively. The illegal underground cannabis industry over the last four or five months has flourished from edibles to selling flour. And that's an amazing thing, but at the end of the day, that's still an, an unregulated market, which means the consumer isn't protected. So if we don't regulate and we don't get our proverbial shit together, you know, we're going to end up in the same situations that they, they are in the States, where still the majority of cannabis being sold in the States is on, is on the black market. So the opportunity is just is, is so incredible, but we have to embrace this properly. We have to work on the legislation now and turn things around. Have you had any... Um, That's a long, long answer to your question. <laughs> Have you had any uh, government officials joining your course to get a bit of education? Or anybody in the, in the we, authority position that they call themselves? <clears throat> we, we, ha we haven't, but we do. We have had uh, authoritative people on our webinars. Um, so we've had you know, all kinds of people on our webinars, which we're aware of. We've, we've had people from SAPRA on our webinars in the past. Uh, so we, we are aware that governments are, are looking at these things, but that's a good point. In fact, that's we great. should be knocking on the government's door to try to sell them courses, you know? Yeah, that's great. Um, because I think that the, the, the important thing at the moment is, and, you know, a year ago when, when we started to, when we were looking at launching the academy, I looked around and I was like, you know, there are, there are, there are no real cannabis experts in South Africa. This is like a year ago. There are, there are a few, but there are, you could literally list them on one hand. In the last 12 months, you know, I have seen a massive, massive increase in that in terms of people being specialists, whether it's, you know, whatever that area they've specialized in. But it's very exciting that, uh, that there are people who I, I would definitely consider experts in the field. But what's missing is that formal education. So, you know, I had a guy at grow call me today. He said, you know, I've been growing for 10 years. Um, I've learned all the stuff on YouTube, but I know nothing about the industry. I don't really understand. I understand how to grow, but I don't really understand the <coughs> endocannabinoid system and receptors and... So we're like, well, that's the basic foundation work that needs to be done within this marketplace. Someone else called me today and said, I want to train my guys for this farm. I said, what do your guys know about cannabis? They said nothing. I said, well, the first thing you need to do is you need to learn about what the plant does with the body. You know, it doesn't matter how, what level you're growing on. So those fundamentals, I think, are missing at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I certainly think that we've got to upskill on a fundamental level. And then the next phase of that is to upskill in terms of specialization. Uh, please tell us a little bit about your upcoming webinar. Will it be open to the public, Trenton? It, it's, it's totally open to the public. All of the webinars we do are free. Uh, we just, um, we're just trying to stimulate education, and at the moment, I just don't believe webinars should be charged for. So they're all free. I mean, we did a Grow webinar two, three weeks ago on genetics, and we had over 600 people on the webinar, which was amazing. Nice. So there's, a, there's a, a great interest in the cannabis industry. Next week... Um, we have uh, Gareth Prince, who you, you guys know very, very well, um, you know, stalwart of the fight for legalization, so super happy that he's going to share his opinion. Um, we have uh, Myrtle on there. Um, they have a very interesting uh, character from the States called uh, John Kagai, um, who I um, reached out to a number of weeks ago, and he is a data analyst from New Frontier Data. Um, and what's really amazing about him is he understands the difference um, between the models that are being rolled out in developed and developing countries. You know, it's not a one-size-fits-all. We are not the same as Canada. We are not the same as, as France. We have a totally unique environment. We're also not the same as Argentina or Brazil. You know, there are commonalities, and to, to take those international models that are, that are, that are being rolled out, 
and then and then working with those with, into our own ecosphere is super important. So so this guy is going to come on and give us some insights into that. Um, we've got Paul Michael Kichel, who, who you guys know really well, who's been at the forefront of cannabis legalization from a legal perspective. So super excited to have him. Um, and then we have uh, Phyllis Sande uh, Makanta from the um, oh. um, Fubu, uh, Farmers Fubu. Court Network. Um, to, yeah, I, I knew I was going to get that wrong. Nah, Just to good. give us a... An mm -hmm. on the ground perspective, because what's what's super important through this legislative process for us, and in our opinion, is if the man on the street, I know this is something that this speaks very closely to your heart, but if the man on the street, if the urban farmer in in the township or the or the, or the, the, the farmers in the Eastern Cape or the 9,000 odd illegal farms that uh, exist are totally pushed out of the market, the market will not work. It will totally there will be a, an internal crazy revolution because yeah. people are not going to stop selling cannabis. So we have to get on top of this legislation. We have to work on, on some of the models that uh, you guys have been developing and make sure the government know about them. So the webinar we're doing is really just to create open conversation about this space. We always do Q&A, so it's a good chance for people in the audience to ask questions, to unpack this bill that's out at the moment, to get a bit of a deeper understanding of that. And just to have these amazing minds in the same space that can give different perspectives so we can somehow, you know, move towards positive outcomes, if essentially. What I, what I like is that you obviously understand that networking is also an important aspect. You're bringing in a lot of different, uh, mm. lot of different people into the same sort of space. Yeah, what kind to, of people to share up? ideas, which is, which is very important. I mean, there are all kinds of people that sign up. You know, when we look at the stats of where people come from, they can be literally from somewhere, you know, in, from Port St. John's to Bloemfontein to Pretoria. <laughs> we have guys, you know, coming in from Namibia. Like, literally, there's a huge amount of interest across the country. Um, and, you, and you're right. I think one of, the, one of the challenges in developing countries is that we have a very short-term mentality. We always... You know, we, we don't look at the long game. If you ask the majority of our population from di different class groups, you know, do you have a pension? Do you have savings? Most of the populace is living hand to mouth. So when we do business in this country and, and in developing countries, we're very short term in our focus. So we don't collaborate enough. We don't work together enough. You know, everybody's kind of in it for themselves. And when we started this, you know, we started with these things, the craft cannabis sessions, which you guys know. And it was just about bringing people together, bringing people to network. This industry has potential to make a living for a lot of people. But without that collaborative space, without people unifying, working together and feeding off each other and sharing information, yeah, yeah. we're just we're just gonna put one foot in front of the other far too slowly. And the reality is, is the world is moving forward very, very, very fast. Mm -hmm. There are other African countries that are bringing legislation in line. And if we don't move on this and we don't actually capitalize on this now, it's going to hurt the industry and it's going to affect us in the long run. But yes, you're right. It's all about collaboration in our eyes. Yeah. Uh, what sort of questions do you think Myrtle will get? Um, it's hard to say, you know. I mean, you know, you know, with questions, they they all come from different angles. I think, I think, um, you know, obviously her opinion is is super important in this space. Uh, she has deep deep knowledge of of the of the legislation of the his history. I really believe that her in particular, her heart is in the right place in terms of. You know, what, what, what's always said about if the guy can't sell his box, you know, at the, at the taxi rank, then, you know, then we haven't, we haven't achieved what uh, we set out to do. And I think that's the important thing. As big pharma move into the space and, and, and the, the, the corporate sort of venture capitalists move into the space, a lot of people are seeing it as a, as a green rush. I was asked a question today, you know, what would I say to someone trying to get into the cannabis space as an entrepreneur, as a business <clears throat> startup? And I said, first of all, if you're coming into cannabis to make money, Please do not do it. Thank you. Yeah. Because yes, it, it is an industry which is which is a prime for, for good growth, but it is a tough industry. It's like any other business. Um, it, there's a lot of resilience that's needed. There are a lot of things to navigate within the space. So it is not quick money. And I think you're going to see a lot of people failing in this industry who come into it or in it for 12 months and just don't have the stamina. And in a, way, in a way, that's a good thing because ultimately the cream will rise and the people who put the work in will succeed. But I think you know, Myrtle in, in this particular case has a lot of experience. And um, I just I really look forward to having all these minds in the same space to really unpack this and get some sort of decent you know, opinion on, 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 on what we should do. Yeah. And then...
on our last question of the <coughs> evening, do you think weed is being colonized? Do I think weed has been colonized? Wow, that's such an interesting question. And um, um, mm, that's a very interesting <laughs> question. I mean, to, to, In 140 to degree, cases or less. <laughs> yeah, to, to a degree, hasn't everything been colonized to some degree? Yeah. Um, listen, colonization had its pros and cons. And, you know, there are those who said they had pros, which I disagree with, you know. Um, I think, in my mind, what, what's more more important is cultural colonization. That's something I always speak quite openly about. Is you know we've been coca colonized by the West yeah. for far too long. So 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 I absolutely do believe that if we don't protect our own genetics, we don't protect our own environment. You know that, that I, I'm very into Ubuntu and to being open, but I'm also into making sure we protect what we have. You know because. You know, we, we've got lots of examples of, of, of good and bad of the Chinese moving into Africa and, and, and capitalizing on, 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 on financial colonization as opposed to cultural colonization. So I, I do think that the cannabis has that, has that risk to be um, taken over by multinationals. You have a lot of cash. But what's interesting is I think there's a really, really healthy craft cannabis scene here. And like that's like happened in the States, because of the lack of legislation going federally, that's allowed craft cannabis within different states to really flourish. So I'm hoping that there's enough groundswell and enough people with real passion for cannabis to make sure that we minimize the sort of colonization of cannabis. But there's going to be a degree of that, and you do need the big guys, but they're always going to need the small guys on the ground as well. So hopefully we can find an equilibrium between the two. Look, dude, I think the, the work that you're doing is amazing and it's really sort of building towards creating an ethical cannabis community, South African cannabis community, which is fantastic. And I sincerely hope the lawmakers knock on your door for a proper education before they write yes. the God next bill. Damn, they need this bill education. is like one foot in the grave, my friend. We need to come up with like um, a coloring um, in book type education yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. we can <laughs> drop off at all the police stations. <clears throat> I think Trenton should yeah. be the minister of the Department of Higher Education. education. <laughs> Trenton, thank you very much for joining us. Guys, please go check out Thanks the link God. in the bottom. Stay lit, dude. Oh, yeah, thank yeah, yeah. you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Cheers, brother. Have a great night, man. Thanks, guys. Ciao.